Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and Reactive Chemistry Module number three. This is the penultimate video in this particular uh, module. It's number 29 and we're going to have a quick look at the concept of activation energy. We very uh, briefly introduced this concept in the previous video when we were looking at catalysts. We said there that one of the things that a catalyst does is to lower the activation energy. And I briefly mentioned that activation energy is the energy that's required by the reactants to produce the products. That is, it's just the amount of energy that we need to begin a chemical reaction. As we start to transition from this topic to our final topic on drivers of reactions, we are going to start to look at energy in a lot more detail in terms of exactly how we measure it and how we quantify the changes in energy that occur through different chemical reactions. In fact, what we can produce is a diagram similar to the one on this slide, which is called an energy profile diagram. Energy profile diagrams are really useful for explaining concepts like uh, exothermic and endothermic reactions. And these are terms you may already be familiar with, but ones we will look at in a little bit more detail later on. Um, but also in explaining this idea of activation energy. The one thing that's very important to remember is that the reactants are just chemical substances. And inside of chemical substances, are chemical bonds and inside of chemical bonds are stored or potential energy in the form of chemical potential energy. This is a certain value or this at least is equivalent to a certain value and what we need to do is we need to raise or at least put in a certain amount of energy in order to pull apart these uh, particular atoms from one another. In order to do that, we need to add a different amount of energy for different substances and therefore to facilitate different types of chemical reactions. The amount of energy that we need to put in is referred to as the activation energy or the energy of activation, often given the symbol EA. The energy of activation um, can be represented on this diagram by the difference in the amount of energy that the uh, reactants have and the amount of energy that's required in order for them to uh, tip over and react. Often at what is labeled here as a transition state can also be uh, what we might call an activated complex. So sometimes we have a um, a joining together of different atoms and molecules uh, to form some sort of a complex of different uh, combined atoms which then break apart from one another to form our uh, eventual products. So as the reaction proceeds and we add additional energy in, we move the reactants up through this little energy hill until they reach the peak, which is that point of activation energy. And at that point, they then have sufficient energy for them to react. Once they've reacted, they will then have a certain amount of chemical uh, potential energy locked up in the bonds in the product uh, substances or substance. The amount of energy that's uh, present in the products can be compared to the amount of energy in the reactants. And the relationship between exothermic and endothermic reactions um, is related directly to the difference in energy between the bonds that are uh, present within the reactant substances and those which are uh, present in the products. Now, these concepts we will be having a look at in a little more detail when we move on to our drivers of reactions. So for now, just um, if you can just be familiar with this idea of an energy profile diagram, the fact that the amount of energy that we need to reach the top of the hill is known as the activation energy, um, and that this is equivalent to the amount of energy that's needed to begin a chemical reaction, then you'll have a good general working definition of activation energy and one that we can carry through into our next sections of work. Thanks for watching.